Do you know that game that gets critical praise out the ass, so you finally sit down to play it yourself? And you end up not feeling the same way. I personally found God of War Ragnarok to be a good game, but not an amazing one. Just downvote the video and leave now. There are some things that improved since the 2018 entry, and I'll start to get the positive vibes going. There will be spoilers for this too, so let's just get that out of the way now. The combat has been improved pretty much all around to me. In addition to the Blades of Chaos and the Leviathan Axe, Kratos can now use the Drop Near Spear as well. At first, this thing seemed pretty weak, but once the player put some upgrades into it, it turned out to be the best weapon. The player can throw the spear indefinitely and have it explode, they can shoot out a gust of air, regular melee attacks, they can hold down the throw button to make the spear into a drill, the downside, it comes about halfway or so through the story. Good things come to those who wait, I guess. Rage has been retooled as well. I stuck with the original Rage that lets Kratos destroy enemies while gaining a little bit of health, because I found it to be the best. If the player wishes, they can have the Rage either restore a large amount of their health, or focus in on one enemy and secure the kill. It adds a nice wrinkle of strategy, but like I said before, I found the original Rage to be the best one, so I just use that all the time. Like in God of War 2018, you can buy new attacks with the experience that Kratos has obtained. The neat new addition here is the fact that the player can upgrade the attacks once they hit milestones for using them a certain amount of times. This will take experience to do, but if you find yourself using the same attack a lot, it could be worth it. The bosses this time around are majorly improved. One common complaint about the 2018 game was all the trolls. If there was a mini boss in 2018, it was probably a troll. Here, the game throws so many different types of bosses and enemies at the opponent. Some of the more common ones, like wenches, can get annoying after a bit. I'd argue that overall, the variety here is much better than in 2018. Atreus isn't the only character to follow Kratos around this time. At certain sections of the game, Freya, Brock, and the boy will follow Kratos. Usually, their influence on combat is stuck to just hitting square, but they have differences in their attacks. Freya and the boy are fleshed out pretty decently too. They both gain experience separately from Kratos and have skill trees that diversify their movesets further. The combat overall is very similar to 2018, which I would argue that isn't a bad thing, especially since the enemy variety has been fixed. Kratos can still use heavy and light runic attacks, he can still do finishing moves when the mash meter is full, he can still go out there with just his fists if he wants to. I will note that I played on the Give Me No Mercy difficulty because I wanted to challenge, but I heard that the enemies are too spongy on the hardest mode. There are definitely a few difficulty spikes, and some enemies did seem like sponges and they took forever to kill, but overall I thought it was a decent challenge most of the way through. In a pure combat sense, God of War Ragnarok is better in virtually every way than the 2018 game, at least to me. So what is my problem with it? The pacing, man. I swear to god, about every hour or so, I just wanted to put the controller down. I get that it's a cinematic game, and to be fair, I've played similar games like Uncharted 4, Marvel Spider-Man, and God of War 2018. I've at the very least liked all these games, especially God of War 2018, I played that earlier this year. So what happened here? I guess I need to go back to God of War 2018 to confirm this, but are the puzzles more prevalent in Ragnarok? Puzzles here and there are fine, but I feel like it just gets to be a point where dozens are just annoying as hell to finish. None of them are necessarily complicated, but some can take a minute or two to figure out. Some will involve freezing water with the axe, throwing the axe at something in a specific way, freezing other mechanisms in place, using sigil arrows to transfer fire to another place, among other examples. The character spoiling the puzzle in 5 seconds flat also gets kind of old. Obvious spoilers, but I actually kind of like the story overall. There are some great moments scattered throughout the game. Moments such as Kratos kicking Heimdall's ass because he was a douche, Freya suiting up in her Valkyrie gear to fight Kratos, Atreus accidentally letting Garm loose, the first fight against Thor, and Sentry destroying Odin's soul because he killed Brock. These are some great highlights. Maybe it was just me, but the story is told over such a long period of time that I definitely lost details. Some of the sections you play as Atreus and oh my god. I'm sorry, but playing as him is just such a chore. Almost every single time the game panned to him, and I realized that I was going to take control of him, I got annoyed and would usually just stop playing for a while. Ironwood is simply the worst offender to me. This part took way too long. I think it took me roughly an hour and a half to two hours, and I just wasn't having fun. Going around a slow-ass yak and picking up fruits? That isn't what I want out of this game, or really any game to be honest. Some things really open up here, like Atreus really opens up as a fighter. This is when his moveset diversifies a bit, and he gets to use his rage mode. This will turn him into a wolf and he will go ape shit on everything. The player can also use light and heavy runic attacks like Kratos. The boss battle here was actually pretty cool as well. It simply feels like a section that is too long, and they try to cram too much stuff into it. They put many important details in here for the story, but I think that the gameplay really suffered for it, and I just wanted to get back to being Kratos. At the very least, I feel like the Atreus sections get better as you go along. The first few are really boring in my opinion. Like him going to Midgar with Sindri to see if Freya would side with him was just a bore to me. I also wasn't really a fan of the section where he first finds Odin. But after these first few missions though, I genuinely do think that they get better. I'm not sure if it's because they are shorter or there was just more action to them. Unfortunately, these sections will probably keep me from replaying this game ever again. 
Admittedly, I like simpler stories, and God of War 2018 gave me that. You can sum up the story in the game by simply saying, Kratos and Atreus go to the top of the mountain to spread the ashes of their loved one. I'm not sure if maybe I expected more out of this game. We knew going into it that it would be a sequel that plays like the first one, so I am really baffled as to why I didn't end up liking this game more. Moving back into a more positive direction, I like the variety of places that the player gets to see. I remember one huge gripe about 2018 was a lack of variety in not just the enemies you fight, but the places you visit. A lot of 2018's places look so similar. In Ragnarok, we get to see lush jungles, arctic wastelands, volcanoes, and villages. There is much more to see in God of War Ragnarok. Combining this with the fact that looting random chests is still fun, I thought that Ragnarok had a world that was more fun to explore. Meanwhile, this is a PS4 game at heart, the game will still use the PS5's internal SSD to load the game quickly. If you eat ass like me and die a lot, you'll be happy to know that the loading screen will get you right back into the action. Oddly, going between realms is still like 20 or 30 seconds for some reason. This must have been a deliberate choice because everything else loads like lightning. Other things that are good in 2018 are still good here too. The voice acting is simply top notch and is some of the best you're going to find in the industry. The graphics are also top-notch and the game overall is pretty bug-free. I saw a few videos floating around on Twitter, but nothing serious. That music? Oh, the music in this game is also very pleasant to listen to. I don't want this review to be too long, so I'll just stop here. God of War Ragnarok is a good game. I get why people adore this game and why it was a front-runner for the Ultimate Game of the Year award. I think a 5 out of 7 is fair here. I like the game overall, the combat was still a lot of fun, the world is fun to explore, and the presentation and performance were great. I just wish that this game was paced better is all, and I really did not like playing as Atreus. I just felt like my 30 hour adventure could have easily been 20 hours, and it would have been better that way. No contest!